Well, my name is Rael Isaacowitz. Uh, I was born in South Africa. Uh, I grew up in South Africa till I was a young teen, about 15 and a half. I then moved to Israel, where I spent uh, 15 or so years. Uh, I then moved to England to do my graduate studies, my master's degree, spent uh, and, and, and dance. I'll go back to a little bit of my uh, movement history. Uh, but I spent four years in England. Um, I then, traveling through the East, reached Australia. And I was offered a position uh, to direct a dance department at a performing arts college in Australia. And then uh, I was invited out to the States as a guest artist initially to choreograph and perform, but I gave a few lectures on Pilates and was invited out to the States by an orthopedic surgeon uh, to set up, help him set up a rehab program based on Pilates. So that's just a little bit of a synopsis to give you an, a sense of, you know, growing up in South Africa, in Israel, uh, England, Australia, and the states. And really my history is a such a convergence of all those cultures and I feel very close uh, to all those cultures. Um, in terms of my, my movement history, uh, I'm going to keep it very brief because I don't think it's uh, good to go into all the details, but I was introduced to uh, Pilates uh, I had just finished uh, serving in the military for three years and I went to um, uh, physical education college and I was dancing a lot at that time. I had done years of yoga, I had been a competitive swimmer. Uh, I wanted to go and get academic study in the body. I wanted to study about the science of movement uh, because I had spent years doing yoga, tai chi. I had dabbled in dance up until that point. But in, 19, in uh, the late 70s, I was introduced to Pilates through a dance company and became more and more uh, interested in it, but it certainly didn't, didn't become my whole life at that point at all. I was still dancing a lot. I was studying. I finished my degree and um, was teaching movement, gymnastics, um, uh, as I said, dancing, and starting to practice Pilates more and more seriously. I was then invited back to uh, be a faculty member at the college I graduated from, the Wingate Institute of Physical Education, and I lectured and taught at the college for three years, and I wanted to get my master's degree, so I went to uh, England to study at the University of Surrey uh, in dance and human movement. Uh, my first degree being a very scientific focus of uh, exercise physiology, biomechanics, a lot of anatomy. And I wanted to get more of the art of human movement. And so my graduate studies were in dance and human movement. Um, in England, I was dancing a lot and became more and more immersed in Pilates, very much inspired by Alan Herdman. Alan is a dear friend and a very early inspiration of mine. Uh, I spent four years in England teaching Pilates more and more intensely in the West End, which is kind of 42nd Street of England. It's where all the performers are, and I, I was with a lot of performers there um, teaching dance classes and Pilates. Uh, so throughout my time in England, I was teaching Pilates and studying. And then I went to Australia. And there I, again, was doing dance and Pilates. And when I was offered a position at a performing arts college, I said, I will do it on one condition. We have a Pilates program for all the students in the college. So all the students did... Um, their dance technique, but they also did Pilates mat work. And then I had a small studio where I would see the students privately, uh, individually, uh, for sessions on the equipment. But all the students got mat work. So we would do Pilates mat work for an hour and a half and then go into dance technique and then into rehearsal. It was incredible to see the level of dance and fitness and conditioning 
and of course their Pilates was beautiful. In 1990, I believe, I was invited out to the States to choreograph and perform uh, for a college in Southern California, Orange Coast College. And um, while teaching at the college, the Performing Arts College, I was invited out to the States by a friend uh, who I knew through Pilates actually, who was chair of the dance department at Orange Coast College here in Southern California. And she invited me out to set a piece on the faculty and to perform. And while I was out here, I gave a few lectures on Pilates and uh, an orthopedic surgeon who worked a lot with dancers, particularly from California State University, Long Beach. And I had connections with Long Beach already, Cal State Long Beach. He invited me to come out to the States and set up a rehab program which would integrate Pilates. And uh, in 1991, I came out to the States and uh, really the rest is history in terms of I worked with him for a while and then uh, I worked with uh, physical therapists, chiropractors, really those that were at the forefront of pioneering integrating Pilates into a therapeutic environment, which I had done in Australia. Australia was very forward thinking in that way. I worked with a lot of athletes at the college, the athletes would come to me from football players, rugby players, basketball players. Uh, I was working with some of the best physiotherapists that I've worked with in my entire career. Incredible people, orthopedic surgeons. We really created a multidisciplinary approach to well being, and Pilates was the meeting ground. Everything centered around this conditioning program. And I started doing the same here in the States. I opened my own studio, late 1991. It was called On Center Conditioning. And Bassi Pilates uh, be really was born in the early years in Australia. I gave my first courses in 1989, 1990, 91, and then came out here. The studio and the training organization were called two different names at that time. Bassi Pilates stands for Body Arts and Science International. On Center Conditioning was the name of the studio. A few years ago, I gave away that identity of the studio. I put it to rest, and it's all become Bassi Pilates. And it's grown from a kernel, a seed of an idea. Three people on the first course, I remember them so well, a physiotherapist, a dancer and an actor. And it's grown now from that little course to a program that is represented in uh, over 30 countries. It fluctuates a little, but somewhere between 30 to 35 countries, about 100 host locations, um, over 10,000 graduates, and a family, a community of people that I could not be prouder of not only because of their commitment to Pilates, but their commitment to positive thinking and making the world a better place. Uh, I did have the great privilege of studying to greater and lesser degrees with five of the original first generation teachers. Um, the closest to me, a person who became a teacher and then a mentor and then a true and dear personal friend was Kathy Stanford Grant. Kathy Grant and I had a very, very close friendship and relationship. She wrote the foreword to my book. Um, I, but, but really, um, Kathy, uh, Romana, Eve Gentry, Ron Fletcher, Alan Herdman, who wasn't a first generation teacher, but, but very uh, close to that first generation, a tremendous influence on my life. Um, later on, meeting Lolita San Miguel, who became a dear, dear friend. And each one of those people had such a um, profound influence, even though I didn't spend a great deal of time with all of them, but certainly just taking sessions uh, hosting their workshops, going to their workshops. Uh, each one of them gave me wisdom 
not that I have the wisdom, they gave me of their wisdom. And I have really taken so much of it to heart and, and I remain a perpetual student of the body and of human movement. Pilates has changed my life in many, many ways, more ways than I could recount. Um, because Pilates is a part of my life. It's not something that I go to a studio and do. I, I'm an avid uh, athlete and, and uh, sports person. I, I love windsurfing, kiteboarding, surfing, mountain biking, uh, the martial arts, um, snowboarding, skiing. I, I love activities that allow me to be in harmony with nature. But Pilates is an integral part of that. And that is an integral part of my Pilates. I, I don't separate life and Pilates. Pilates is very much a part of my life. And it has given me so much in my life that I am humbled by how much it has given me in my life. The incredible people that have uh, touched my life in so many ways, from the great teachers that I've had the privilege of studying with, to the many, many students that have put their faith in me. And I see that as an incredible responsibility and a blessing to be able to go around the world. I've, I've Because of my life, having lived in, uh, in different continents, um, my path has again and again allowed me to travel and get to know different cultures. And each culture has given me so much, the people have given me so much, and it is so far beyond just the exercises and the movements of Pilates. It has truly been a privilege to become a part of people's lives and the transformation of people's lives. What do I want to see Pilates? How do I want to see Pilates in the future? It's such a hard question and difficult one because, you know, having viewed Pilates over four decades, you know, close to 40 years, um, seeing how it's changed, seeing how the face of it has changed, how the essence, the essence hasn't changed, but the face of it has changed and it's become you know, used and utilized, and in some cases, uh, forgive me for saying this, but in some cases I think abused, because it's not the Pilates I know. Uh, it, many instances of people using the term Pilates, the connection to Pilates is very, very loose at best. It, it, you need your imagination to know that it has any connection to Pilates, but the name has been used because it's, it's a catch. It's a marketing catch. The essence of what I teach has always been the same, and it will remain the same. And I hope for the future that there will always be a strong movement of people that are committed to the essence of the teachings of Joseph and Clara Pilates to the principles of the teachings of Joseph and Clara Pilates. And I'm not saying we should not evolve. We have to evolve. The world is a very different place. Those who I teach, I want them to evolve. I don't want them to be exactly duplicates of me. No, I want them to be their own people. But the essence of their teaching of Joseph and Clara Pilates should remain present, embedded in our teaching. And that's what I hope will continue for years and years to come. Because sometimes Pilates is at risk of losing that essence. And that's why Bassi Pilates stands for maintaining those principles, the teachings of Joseph Pilates, but bringing it into a contemporary context. The world we live in today is a completely different world to that which Joseph Pilates and Clara Pilates lived in. 
the needs of society today, the needs of our bodies today, of our minds, of our spirits, is very different. Of our emotions, we're in a very different state to that which they lived. So we need to adapt to that, even in the movements that we teach and the sessions we teach. Saying that, I never, ever lose sight of the source. So it truly is a lineage, and it's a connection to the source of Joseph and Clara Pilates. And I want to maintain that well into the future and not be sidelined by the temptation of commercialism and only growth and only popularity and only masses of people. No, uh, let's use technology, let's use growth, but always with integrity and always with that essence of truth because that's how we transform lives and that's how we transform the world into a positive place. Who was Joseph Pilates? That, that's a very interesting question. Uh, you know, and not only have I read his books many, many times uh, in preparation to write my books. I, I've written two books, one Pilates and one Pilates Anatomy, and both relate very strongly to his original texts. And I try to get a sense of who, who this person was. And many times I've asked myself, would I really like this person? Would I identify with him as a person? There is no question that he was a visionary. There is no question he was infinitely and incredibly creative. There is no question that he was a man truly ahead of his time. Um, as a person, personally, I'm not sure I would have resonated closely with him. Uh, it just seems I never had the privilege of meeting Joseph Pilates. I've only met him through stories of others. I th think I would have had tremendous respect for him. and. Um, even reverence and seeing him as a true teacher and he has taught me so much even though I didn't meet him he's taught me through his work through others he's taught me so much on a personal level just reading his books reading how he writes um, I'm just a different type of person and I don't think I would have found a personal closeness with him uh, and the way he uh, saw life, but I think I would have found a strong intellectual and professional closeness. I love his sense of discipline. I'm very disciplined in my own life and in my own work. I love his sense of creativeness and always growing and always coming up with ideas and always evolving. That's why I, I get really upset when, when people don't embrace evolution. Evolution and growth and change is not bad as long as we always acknowledge the source. So in many ways I, I think I would have found common ground, uh, but in some ways probably not in all honesty. Pilates is a system of conditioning and fitness for body, mind, and spirit. And it's a vehicle for positive change in our lives. You know, I, I, um, I keep a, um, a document on the desktop of my computer, and um, it's a document of inspirational thoughts. That, that I've collected over the years. And, I, you know, on, on any particular day, I'm just looking through this list of inspirational thoughts, and, and I, I pick and choose thoughts that um, inspire me. And, um, you know, if, if it's a day that I'm thinking more of the body, I, I love 
Joseph Pilates uh, quote, and I'm paraphrasing, but about the spine, that if you, your spine is stiff and rigid at the age of 30, you're old, and if it's flexible and pliable at the age of 60, you're young. I, I love that as I get older, and I'm um, well into my 60s, I, it inspires me to think that I can still be young because uh, I feel young in my body, I'm still moving, I'm still doing so many of the movements that I did years ago, and probably understanding them better than I did years ago, probably not executing them physically quite as well as I did, uh, you know, 30 years ago or 40 years ago, but certainly it, it's, it's the foundation of what allows me to still kiteboard and still snowboard and still cycle and mountain bike and do karate with my son and different things. So that's a quote that I love. I love the, the quote of fitness is the first requisite of happiness. Um, although I, I, I don't want to see it just as physical fitness. Fitness can mean many things. And it's just being positive being uh, the best that you can be. But the quotes that always touch me the deepest personally are quotes that have to do with humility. Because I feel as a teacher, I have a commitment to my students to always be a student and always remain humble and always be open to learning. And there are times when I may find myself shutting down. And then I go and read a quote by the great visionaries of, our, of the generations. It may be Mahatma Gandhi, it may be Nelson Mandela, it may be um, great poets. It may, I try and find quotes that remind me of humility, remind me that I am very privileged to be in a situation where I can impact people's lives positively. So, you know, I, I can't really cite just one, but it's, it's you know, uh, really having humility and appreciation for life. Well, you know, when people ask me why they should do Pilates, I always preface my answer by saying, and this only really works in English, I don't think it works in every language, but I always preface my answer by saying, Pilates is for anyone, but not for everyone. What do I mean by that? I mean anyone can do Pilates, but not everyone's gonna love it, and that's fine. I'm not here to convert people. I'm here to guide those that want to be guided into Pilates. And why Pilates? Because it is an incredible system of physical, mental, emotional conditioning. It allows you to be at peak performance Whatever that peak may be, because it's very individual, it's, it's completely non-competitive. Pilates is non-competitive and it should be. Uh, I draw the same inspiration teaching an 85-year-old man or woman that may be quite limited in mobility and getting them to do uh, just an exercise on the reformer maybe to allow them to feel a little more back extension as I do working with an Olympic athlete. They bring me the same satisfaction. So I just say to people, it is a great system that is, will allow you to be fit in every way, will give you a great workout, will allow you to feel rejuvenated physically, mentally, emotionally, um, and it, it has a beautiful flow to it, great movement. So why do it? Because it has the potential of impacting your life in a very positive way. Could you achieve the same with other systems? Absolutely, you could. 
Uh, there are people that relate more to yoga, and that's fine. There are people that relate more to cycling, and that's fine. There are people that relate more to weightlifting, and that's fine. I think Pilates is very safe. It's very kind to the body. It uh, allows you to practice the system at any age. Now, not every, every system can claim that because you probably won't be able to do lift uh, heavier weights when you get of a certain age where it's no longer kind to your body. Pilates can be practiced at any age and at any fitness level and at any, for any um, goals, meaning it's going to be challenging for the Olympic athlete, the world-class athlete, and it's going to be challenging for a, a, an older person who just wants to keep moving to stay in shape as they go into the sunset of their lives. So I think it, it has many positive things and probably the most is that it's so adaptable to many different populations. That is a diff very difficult question. Yeah, that's why I could not <laughs> give you before. <laughs> You know, if I could ask Joseph Pilates one question, I would ask him to tell me what has made his career so rich and what pearl of wisdom and what great gem of information he could tell me to convey to my students to allow them to see how profound this work is. So I would want guidance from Joseph Pilates uh, to guide others, to help me guide others into the depths of this work and into the system. And I would just want him to give me some advice how to be a better teacher, a better student, and a better practitioner of his method.